Okay, friends, today we're going to go from this to this to this and then finally to this using some clever lighting in Clo 3D and some optional AI generative fills in Photoshop. Let's hop in. If you're already familiar with the render tools in Clo 3D, then jump to the end of the video where I enhance the picture with some Photoshop tools and AI avatar swapping. In Clo 3D, open the render window and it will look like this. Click up here in the interactive render and you're going to toggle between this and the stop render window quite a lot in this process. That's going to make your computer run a lot more smoothly and you're going to be able to move around the 3D window without having to catch up over here. The whole process of rendering is so that you can capture all of the textures and materials in your 3D model along with the lights and the meshes and you can do that with high resolution, so it takes a little time to compute it. The last button that you're going to click in this whole process is up here, and this is your final render button. The Save Current Image option is kind of handy. You can just quickly name a file and export your current view, but know that it is low res. The next one shows where you saved it in case you forgot. Let's get down to the Image Background and select Image. You can also use turntable images or animations, but note that those do take a while to render. You can also choose the image size here and skip these smaller sizes and go to HD. That's the purpose of rendering, right? I'm going to go with 1920 by 1080 and then I'm going to flip those down here in this custom size. And that's because I want to use a vertical format like for Instagram Reels or TikTok. If you want to see what it looks like here, always click the interactive render and you can see what the changes look like. You can change the background color or the background texture here. If you want to add an image like this, just click the four little dots and select your picture. I'm going to trash this picture later uh, because I just want to use it as a point of reference for right now for what I'm going to do. Later on, I'll export with transparency turned on. Below that, you can set a custom file name, and the next one is a location of the save file on your machine. Then, for transparency, of course, we're going to select PNG file because PNG files are transparent. The next one is camera, and I don't change a whole lot here, but sometimes you want to use physical camera options. Say you're into SLR photography and you want to change maybe the exposure, or maybe you want to change the ISO, for example. The next option is our light panel, and by default it comes with a dome light. And you can choose some of these different scenarios here. Just rifle through them to see what happens with your interactive render window turned on. So here are the rendering properties. If you have a graphics card, you can choose GPU and it will render a lot faster. However, one thing you should always change is the max render time. Your default is set to 20 minutes, and that's a long time to wait for a picture. Set it down to one minute. Here's the AI Avatar Studio, and it's pretty cool, but right now I think it's switched off. Once it's updated, you can create a prompt and select gender, age, ethnicity, actually mapping that onto your current avatar, and you can see here's one that I've made. And it really enhances those avatars. Let's light this project with something that's a little more exciting. So I'm going to add a rectangle light. Just click once and it will show the light you just added here in the lighting menu. Then you need to go back to this menu over here and you can deactivate certain lights. And I've deactivated the dome light. So don't be fooled, right now the background image is just a picture and the lighting in our scene does not affect this one. So the reason we don't see anything right now is she's all blacked out and my light comes facing down. So turn off the interactive render, move into your 3D window and pull this light up and rotate it into position. You don't want to be too far away. And the trick is just to have it pointing down a little bit from the top. Okay, and now that it's pointing back at her face, 
let's turn the interactive rendering back on. Okay, I can turn up the intensity here in the lighting window. And it looks a bit harsh, so let's bring it down a bit more. Okay, that looks pretty good. It's still moody and shadowy, like she's in a forest. And we have this really dark shadow along the right side. So we're going to add a rim lighting effect next. Hit stop on the interactive render, and then go to this lock camera option. And that locks the position of the camera in your render window. And I want to keep it there because I also want to move freely in the 3D window to manipulate the light. And now I'm going to add a spotlight. And I'm going to click off and then back on to make sure I'm selected on the light itself. And I'll bring it over here. And I know it's selected because it has that dashed line. Now I'm going to point this kind of toward the camera, but also toward the side of her body where I think that dark shadow is. And I'll come over to the lighting options here in the lighting window and I'm going to crank up the intensity on this one and change the color to some kind of electric blue. And I think that looks really neat. Uh, okay, let's uh, turn on my interactive render again. And I, that's more or less what I'm looking for. But I think I need to move it just a little bit. So I'm going to go over here and change the size of the cone and the penumbra just so there's a little less light leaking through yeah that's great okay last thing we need to do is add some light to uh, her right shoulder on our left side so i'm going to turn off interactive rendering and add another spotlight and then i'm going to move that one into position making sure that it's pointing right at her shoulder Okay, I'm gonna crank this up a little bit and move the color to something that's in the yellow range. Yeah, I'm real happy with that. So now I'm gonna hit stop on the interactive render and I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna double check all of my render settings before exporting the image. Change my GPU. And if you don't have a graphics card, just go with CPU. I'm gonna set my max render to one minute I'm going to give it a name, a save location, make sure transparency is turned on, make sure I'm using a ping file. Okay, now I can hit the render button. It's going to take a few minutes. So I've opened the picture over here in Photoshop and we're going to use generative AI to generate some avatar face and hand swaps because these ones from Clo 3 d are real generic. We'll enhance the lights and shadows and we're going to tweak the background a little bit. To start, I'll grab the quick selection tool, then select her arm and her face. And let's try not to get anything um, but the face and hands here. And if you need to make this brush bigger or smaller, you can just use the left and right brackets on your keyboard. Okay, with that selected, now go up to Window and turn on the contextual taskbar. And the prop I used, uh, it's pretty specific. It's a black woman with braided hair pulled up in a bun. And I hit Generate. That looks okay. Let's see what these other options bring. Okay, that looks better. And I think this looks really good. And it actually captured some of the blue that we have around the outside in our rim lights. So I'm gonna go with this version here. And you can see that it still has a mask and that's set up to get rid of the area that was once her hair from the original image. And that's why we went with a transparent background for this. So we're going to destructively edit the background. Um, and using the eraser tool is probably your best bet. And you already have this picture. So if you totally biff it, just re-import the picture. And I'm going to 
turn the mask layer back on. That looks pretty good. Okay, so now I need to grab a paintbrush, set the color to black, select on the AI generated mask over here. And for the brush, I'm gonna choose a maximum hardness and I'm gonna just paint black over the stuff that I don't want masked off. And if that's too difficult to select or paint, just use the selection tool to select the area you wanna paint. Great, now go to File, Place Embedded and bring in the original picture for the background. I added a blur to my image. And now I wanna do a couple of changes to the garment to enhance the folds and the textures really. I'm going to choose this new adjustment brush tool. It's new and it's awesome. So I want to choose the curves up here first in the taskbar, then just paint right over here. And I'm gonna change the curve selection to crush the darks and lighten the lights a bit. And now I can go back and paint more of it. And it, what it did is it makes an adjustment layer affecting all the layers underneath it. And if you don't want it to affect the background layer or a particular layer underneath, you can always lock that layer first. Or in my case, I'm just gonna destructively do this. I'm gonna select both of these layers and I'm gonna merge them. And then it will auto-correct that uh, layer on the bottom. Okay, let's do another adjustment to this same dress layer here. And I'm gonna choose Vibrance. And I'm gonna start painting. I think it needs a little more vibrance. That might be a little bit too much, so I'm gonna drop that. Okay, I'm gonna select these two layers again. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna merge those. That looks pretty good. And then the last thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna grab the dodge and the burn tool. This is old school. So I'm gonna start with a burn. And again, I'm on the dress layer and I'm going to set the exposure to 9% and I'm going to choose shadows. And I'm going to just uh, paint over and burn those shadows in a bit more. And you have to paint a few times here. And now I'm going to do the same thing for the highlights. I'm going to use dodge, set it to 8 or 9%, and then set it to highlights. And then we're going to paint over some of those areas. Great, now it really pops. Um, and here's the final result. I cropped it down a little bit. Much better than what we uh, kicked out of Clo 3D from the render window with not a lot of extra effort. This elevates your design quite a bit and I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you're looking for more on this, check out my other Clo 3D videos and I'll see you in the next one.